This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Kara Schallenberg. Beowulf. Translated by Francis Barton Gomer. Section 1. Lo, praise of the prowess of people-kings, of spear-armed Danes, in days long sped, we have heard, and what honour the athelings won. Oft skilled the skeffing from squadroned foes, from many a tribe, the mead-bench tore a wing the earls. Since erst he lay friendless, a foundling, fate repaid him, for he waxed under welkin, in wealth he throve, till before him the folk both far and near, who house by the whale-path, heard his mandate, gave him gifts. A good king he. To him an heir was afterward born, a son in his halls whom heaven sent to favor the folk, feeling their woe that erst they had lacked an earl for leader so long a while. The Lord endowed him with wielder of wonder, with world's renown, Famed was this Beowulf, far flew the boast of him, son of skilled, in the Scandian lands. So becomes it a youth to quit him well with his father's friends, by fee and gift, that to aid him, aged, in after days come warriors willing, should war draw nigh, liege men loyal. By lauded deeds shall an earl have honour in every clan. Forth he fared at the fated moment, sturdy skilled to the shelter of God. Then they bore him over the ocean's billow, loving clansmen, as late he charged them, while wielded words the winsome skilled, the leader beloved who long had ruled. In the roadstead rocked a ring-dight vessel, ice-flecked, outbound, Atheling's barge. There laid they down their darling lord on the breast of the boat, the breaker of rings, by the mast the mighty one. Many a treasure fetched from far was freighted with him. No ship have I known so nobly dight with weapons of war and weeds of battle, with breastplate and blade. On his bosom lay a heaped hoard that hence should go far o'er the flood with him floating away. No less these loaded the lordly gifts, Thane's huge treasure, than those had done who in former time forth had sent him soul on the seas, a suckling child. High o'er his head they hoist the standard, a gold-wove banner, let billows take him, gave him to ocean. Grave were their spirits, mournful their mood. No man is able to say in sooth, no son of the halls, no hero neath heaven, who harboured that freight. Now Beowulf bowed in the burg of the Skildings, leader beloved, and long he ruled, in fame with all folk, since his father had gone away from the world, till awoke an heir, haughty Halfdane, who held through life, sage and sturdy, the Skildings glad. Then one after one there awoke to him, to the chieftain of clansmen, children four, Heorogar, then Hrothgar, then Halga brave, and I heard that blank was blank's queen, the Heotho Skilfing's helpmate dear. To Hrothgar was given such glory of war, such honour of combat, that all his kin obeyed him gladly, till great grew his band of youthful comrades. It came in his mind to bid his henchmen a hall uprear, a master mead-house, mightier far than ever was seen by the sons of earth, and within it, then, to old and young, he would all allot that the Lord had sent him, save only the land and the lives of his men. Wide, I heard, was the work commanded, for many a tribe this mid-earth round, to fashion the folkstead. It fell, as he ordered, in rapid achievement, that ready it stood there, of halls the noblest. Herat he named it, whose message had might in many a land. Not reckless of promise, the rings he dealt, treasure at banquet, there towered the hall, high, gabled wide, the hot surge waiting of furious flame. 
nor far was that day when father and son-in-law stood in feud for warfare and hatred that woke again with envy and anger an evil spirit endured the dole in his dark abode that he heard each day the din of revel high in the hall there harps rang out clear song of the singer he sang who knew tales of the early time of man how the almighty made the earth fairest fields enfolded by water set triumphant sun and moon for a light to lighten the land-dwellers and braided bright the breast of earth with limbs and leaves made life for all of mortal beings that breathe and move so lived the clansmen in cheer and revel a winsome life till one began to fashion evils that field of hell grendel this monster grim was called march reaver mighty in moorland living in fen and fastness fief of the giants the hapless wight a while had kept since the creator his exile doomed on kin of cain was the killing avenged by sovereign god for slaughtered abel ill fared his feud and far was he driven for the slaughter's sake from sight of men of cain awoke all that woeful breed ettins and elves and evil spirits as well as the giants that warred with god weary while but their wage was paid them went he forth to find at fall of night that haughty house and heed wherever the ring-danes out revelled to rest had gone found within it the atheling band asleep after feasting and fearless of sorrow of human hardship unhallowed white grim and greedy he grasped betimes wrathful reckless from resting-places thrifty of the thanes and thence he rushed fain of his fell spoil faring homeward laden with slaughter his lair to seek then at the dawning as day was breaking the might of grendel to men was known then after wassail was wail uplifted loud moan in the morn the mighty chief atheling excellent unblithe sat laboured in woe for the loss of his thanes when once had been traced the trail of the fiend spirit accursed too cruel that sorrow too long too loathsome not late the respite with night returning anew began ruthless murder he wrecked no whit firm in his guilt of the feud and crime they were easy to find who elsewhere sought in room remote their rest at night bed in the bowers when that bale was shown was seen in sooth with surest token the hall thanes hate such held themselves far and fast who the fiend outran thus ruled unrighteous and raged his fill one against all until empty stood that lordly building and long it bode so twelve years tied the trouble he bore sovereign of skildings sorrows in plenty boundless cares there came unhidden tidings true to the tribes of men in sorrowful songs how ceaselessly grendel harassed hrothgar what hate he bore him what murder and massacre many a year feud unfading refused consent to deal with any of daneland's earls make pact of peace or compound for gold still less did the wise men ween to get great fee for the feud from his fiendish hands but the evil one ambushed ye old and young death shadow dark and dogged them still lured or lurked in the livelong night of misty moorlands men may say not where the haunts of these hell runes be such heaping of horrors the hater of men lonely roamer wrought unceasing harassings heavy o'er herot he lorded gold bright hall in gloomy nights and ne'er could the prince approach his throne twas judgment of god or have joy in his hall sore was the sorrow to skilding's friend heart-rending misery many nobles sat assembled and searched out counsel how it were best for bold-hearted men against harassing terror to try their hand whilst they vowed in their heathen fanes altar offerings asked with words that the slayer of souls would succour give them for the pain of their people their practice this their heathen hope twas hell they thought of in mood of their mind almighty they knew not doomsman of deeds and dreadful lord nor heaven's helmet heeded they ever 
wielder of wonder, woe for that man who in harm and hatred hails his soul to fiery embraces, nor favour nor change awaits he ever, but well for him that after death-day may draw to his lord and friendship find in the father's arms. Thus seethed unceasing the son of Helfdane with the woe of these days, not wisest men assuaged his sorrow, too sore the anguish, loathly and long, that lay on his folk, most baneful of burdens and bales of the night. This heard in his home Hegelach's thane, great among Geats, of Grendel's doings. He was the mightiest man of valour in that same day of this our life, stalwart and stately, a stout wave-walker, he bade make ready. Yon battle-king, said he, far o'er the swan-road he fain would seek the noble monarch who needed men. The prince's journey by prudent folk was little blamed, though they loved him dear. They whetted the hero and hailed good omens, and now the bold one from bands of Geats comrades chose, the keenest of warriors ere he could find. With fourteen men the sea-wood he sought, and, sailor proved, led them on to the land's confines. Time had now flown, afloat was the ship, boat under bluff. On board they climbed, warriors ready, waves were churning sea with sand. The sailors bore on the breast of the bark their bright array, their mail and weapons. The men pushed off on its willing way the well-braced craft. Then moved o'er the waters by might of the wind that bark like a bird with breast of foam, till in season due on the second day the curved prow such course had run that sailors now could see the land, sea-cliffs shining, steep high hills, headlands broad. Their haven was found, their journey ended. Up then quickly the waders' clansmen climbed ashore, anchored their sea-wood, with armour clashing and gear of battle. God they thanked for passing in peace o'er the paths of the sea. Now saw from the cliff a skilding clansman, a warden that watched the water-side, how they bore o'er the gangway glittering shields, war-gear in readiness. Wonder seized him to know what manner of men they were. Straight to the strand his steed he rode, Hrothgar's henchman. With hand of might he shook his spear and spake in parley. Who are ye then, ye armed men, mailed folk, that yon mighty vessel have urged thus over the ocean ways, here o'er the waters? A warden I, sentinel set o'er the sea-march here, lest any foe to the folk of Danes with harrying fleet should harm the land. No aliens ever at ease thus bore them, linden-wielders, yet word of leave clearly ye lack from clansmen here, my folk's agreement." A greater ne'er saw I of warriors in world than is one of you, yon hero in harness. No henchman he worthied by weapons if witness his features, his peerless presence. I pray you, though, tell your folk and home, lest hence ye fare, suspect to wander your way as spies in Danish land. Now dwellers afar, ocean travellers, take from me simple advice. The sooner the better I hear of the country whence ye came. To him the stateliest spake in answer, the warrior's leader his word-hoard unlocked. We are by kin of the clan of Geats, and Hagalak's own hearth-fellows we. To folk afar was my father known, noble atheling, Ekthau named. Full of winters he fared away aged from earth. He is honoured still, through width of the world by wise men all. To thy lord and liege in loyal mood we hasten hither, to Halfdane's son, people-protector, be pleased to advise us. To that mighty one come we on mickle errand, to the lord of the Danes, nor deem I right that aught be hidden. We hear, thou knowest if sooth it is, the saying of men that amid the skildings a scathing monster Dark ill-doer in dusky nights Shows terrific his rage unmatched, Hatred and murder. To Hrothgar I in greatness of soul Would succour bring, So the wise and brave may worst his foes. If ever the end of ills is fated Of cruel contest, If cure shall follow, And the boiling care-waves cooler grow. 
Else ever afterward anguish days he shall suffer in sorrow while stands in place high on its hill that house unpeered. Astride his steed, the strand ward answered, clansman unquailing, The keen souled thane must be skilled to sever and sunder duly words and works, if he well intends. I gather this band is graciously bent to the skilding's master. March, then, bearing weapons and weeds the way I show you. I will bid my men your boat, meanwhile, to guard, for fear lest foemen come, your new-tarred ship by shore of ocean faithfully watching, till once again it waft o'er the waters these well-loved thanes, winding-necked wood, to waders' bounds, heroes such as the hest of fate shall succour and save from the shock of war. They bent them to march. The boat lay still, fettered by cable and fast at anchor, broad-bosomed ship. Then shone the boars over the cheek-guard, chased with gold, keen and gleaming, guard it kept o'er the man of war, as marched along heroes in haste, till the hall they saw, broad of gable and bright with gold, that was the fairest, mid folk of earth, of houses neath heaven, where Hrothgar lived, and the gleam of it lightened o'er lands afar. The sturdy shieldsmen showed that bright burg of the boldest, bade them go straightway hither. His steed then turned, hardy hero, and hailed them thus. "'Tis time that I fare from you. Father Almighty, in grace and mercy, guard you well, safe in your seekings. Seaward I go, gainst hostile warriors, hold my watch. End of section 1 Read by Kara Schallenberg, www.kray.org On September 25th, 2006 in Oceanside, California. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Kara Schallenberg. Beowulf. Translated by Francis Barton Gamer. Section 2 Stone bright the street, it showed the way to the crowd of clansmen. Corselets glistened, hand forged, hard. On their harness bright the steel ring sang as they strode along in mail of battle and marched to the hall. There, weary of ocean, the wall along they set their bucklers, their broad shields down, and bowed them to bench. The breastplates clanged war-gear of men, their weapons stacked. Spears of the seafarers stood together, grey-tipped. That iron band was worthily weaponed. A warrior proud asked of the heroes their home and kin. Whence now bear ye burnished shields, harness grey, and helmets grim, spears in multitude? Messenger I, Hrothgar's herald, heroes so many ne'er met I as strangers of mood so strong. "'Tis plain for that prowess, not plunged into exile, for high-hearted valour, Hrothgar ye seek. Him the sturdy in war bespake with words, proud earl of the Wedder's answer made, hardy neath helmet. Hygelax, we fellows at board, I am Beowulf named. I am seeking to say to the son of Halfdane this mission of mine, to thy master-lord, the doughty prince." if he deign at all grace that we greet him, the good one now. Wolfgar spake, the Wendell's chieftain, whose might of mind to many was known, his courage and counsel. The king of Danes, the Skilding's friend, I fain will tell the breaker of rings, as the boon thou askest, the famed prince of thy faring hither, and swiftly after such answer bring as the doughty monarch may deign to give. Hide then in haste to where Hrothgar sat, white-haired and old, his earls about him, till the stout thane stood at the shoulder there of the Danish king, good courtier he. Wolfgar spake to his winsome lord, Hither have fared to thee far-come men o'er the paths of ocean, people of Geatland, and the stateliest there by his sturdy band is Beowulf named. 
this boon they seek, that they, my master, may with thee have speech at will, nor spurn their prayer to give them hearing, gracious Hrothgar. In weeds of the warrior worthy they, methinks, of our liking. Their leader most surely, a hero that hither his henchman has led. Hrothgar answered, helmet of Skildings, I knew him of yore in his youthful days. His aged father was Ekthau named, to whom, at home, gave Hrethel the Geat his only daughter. Their offspring bold fares hither to seek the steadfast friend. And seamen, too, have said me this, who carried my gifts to the Geatish court, thither for thanks. He has thirty men's heft of grasp in the grip of his hand, the bold in battle. Blessed God, out of his mercy this man hath sent to Danes of the West, as I ween indeed against horror of Grendel. I hope to give the good youth gold for his gallant thought. Be thou in haste, and bid them hither, clan of kinsmen, to come before me, and add this word. They are welcome guests to folk of the Danes. To the door of the hall Wolfgar went, and the word declared, To you this message my master sends, East Danes king, that your kin he knows, hardy heroes, and hails you all. Welcome hither o'er waves of the sea. Ye may wend your way in war attire, and under helmets Hrothgar greet, but let here the battle-shields bide your parley, and wooden war-shafts wait its end. Up rose the mighty one, ringed with his men, brave band of thanes. Some bowed without, battle-gear guarding, as bade the chief. Then hide that troop where the herald led them, under Herod's roof. The hero strode, hardy neath helm, till the hearth he neared. Beowulf spake, his breastplate gleamed, war-net woven by wit of the smith. Thou, Hrothgar, hail! Hagalax I, kinsman and follower. Fame a-plenty have I gained in youth. These Grendel deeds I heard in my homeland heralded clear. Seafarers say how stands this hall of buildings best, for your band of thanes empty and idle, when evening sun in the harbour of heaven is hidden away. So my vassals advised me well, brave and wise, the best of men. O sovereign Hrothgar, to seek thee here, for my nerve and my might they knew full well. Themselves had seen me from slaughter come, blood-flecked from foes, where five I bound, and that wild brood worsted. I the waves I slew Nikors by night, in need and peril avenging the waders, whose woe they sought, crushing the grim ones. Grendel now, monster cruel, be mine to quell in single battle. So from thee, thou sovereign of the shining Danes, Skilding's bulwark, a boon I seek, and, friend of the folk, refuse it not. O warrior shield, now I've wandered far, that I alone with my liegemen here, this hardy band, may Herod purge. More I hear that the monster dire in his wanton mood of weapons wrecks not, hence shall I scorn, so hide luck stay, king of my kindred, kind to me, brand or buckler to bear in the fight, gold-coloured targe, but with grip alone must I front the fiend and fight for life, foe against foe. Then faith be his in the doom of the Lord whom death shall take. Fain, I ween, if the fight he win, in this hall of gold my geetish band will he fearless eat, as oft before, my noblest thanes. Nor needst thou then to hide my head, for his shall I be, died in gore if death must take me, and my blood-covered body he'll bear as prey, ruthless devour it, the roamer lonely, with my life-blood redden his lair in the fen. No further for me needst food prepare. To Hagelok send, if Hild should take me, best of war-weeds, warding my breast, armour excellent, heirloom of Hrethel, and work of Wayland, fares weird as she must. Hrothgar spake, the Skilding's helmet. For fight defensive, friend my Beowulf, to succour and save, thou hast sought us here. 
Thy father's combat a feud enkindled, when Heotholof with hand he slew among the Wilfings. His weder kin for horror of fighting feared to hold him. Fleeing, he sought our South Dane folk, over surge of ocean the honour skildings, when first I was ruling the folk of Danes, wielded, youthful, this widespread realm, this hoard hold of heroes. Heorogar was dead, my elder brother, had breathed his last, half Dane's bairn, he was better than I. Straightway the feud with fee I settled, to the wilfing sent, o'er watery ridges, treasures olden. Oath he swore me. Sore is my soul to say to any of the race of man what ruth for me in Herot Grendel, with hate hath wrought, what sudden harryings. Hall folk fail me, my warriors wane, for weird hath swept them into Grendel's grasp. But God is able this deadly foe from his deeds to turn. Boasted full oft as my beer they drank, earls o'er the ale cup, armed men, that they would bide in the beer hall here, Grendel's attack with terror of blades. Then was this mead house at morning tide dyed with gore, when the daylight broke all the boards of the benches blood besprinkled gory the hall. I had heroes the less, doughty dear ones that death had reft. But sit to the banquet, unbind thy words, hardy hero, as heart shall prompt thee. Gathered together, the Geetish men in the banquet hall on bench assigned, sturdy spirited, sat them down, hardy hearted. A henchman attended, carried the carven cup in hand, served the clear mead. Oft minstrels sang, blithe in Herot. Heroes revelled, no dearth of warriors, Wader and Dane. Unferth spake, the son of Ecklaf, who sat at the feet of the Skilding's lord, unbound the battle-runes. Beowulf's quest, sturdy seafarers, sorely galled him. Ever he envied that other men should more achieve in Middle-earth of fame under heaven than he himself. Art thou that Beowulf, Breca's rival, who emulous swam on the open sea, when for pride the pair of you proved the floods, and wantonly dared in waters deep to risk your lives? No living man, or leaf, or loath, from your labour dire could you dissuade, from swimming the main. Ocean tides with your arms ye covered, with strenuous hands the sea streets measured, swam o'er the waters. Winter's storm rolled the rough waves, in realm of sea a senite strove ye, in swimming he topped thee, had more of main. Him at morning tide billows bore to the battling Remas, whence he hied to his home so dear, beloved of his liegemen, to land of Brondings, fastness fair, where his folk he ruled, town and treasure. In triumph o'er thee Beanston's bairn his boast achieved, so ween I for thee a worse adventure, though in buffet of battle thou brave hast been, in struggle grim, if Grendel's approach thou darest wait through the watch of night. Beowulf spake, bairn of Ecthau. What a deal hast uttered, dear my unferth, drunken with beer, of Breca now, told of his triumph. Truth I claim it, that I had more of might in the sea than any man else, more ocean endurance. We twain had talked in time of youth, and made our boast. We were merely boys, stripling still, to stake our lives far at sea, and so we performed it. Naked swords, as we swam along, we held in hand, with hope to guard us against the whales. Not a whit from me could he float afar o'er the flood of waves, haste o'er the billows, nor him I abandoned. Together we twain on the tides abode five nights full till the flood divided us, churning waves and chillest weather, darkling night and the northern wind ruthless rushed on us. Rough was the surge. Now the wrath of the sea-fish rose apace, yet me against the monsters my mailed coat, hard and hand-linked, help afforded. Battle-sark braided my breast to ward, garnished with gold. There grasped me firm, and hailed me to bottom the hated foe with grimmest grip. T'was granted me, though, to pierce the monster with point of sword, with blade of battle. Huge beast of the sea was whelmed by the hurly through hand of mine. 
Me thus often the evil monsters thronging threatened. With thrust of my sword, the darling, I dealt them due return. No wise had they bliss from their booty than to devour their victim, vengeful creatures, seated to banquet at bottom of sea. But at break of day my brand sore hurt, on the edge of ocean up they lay, put to sleep by the sword. And since by them on the fathomless sea-ways sailor-folk are never molested, light from east came bright God's beacon, the billows sank, so that I saw the sea-cliff's high windy walls. For weird oft saveth Earl undoomed if he doughty be. And so it came that I killed with my sword nine of the Nicors. Of night-fought battles ne'er heard I a harder neath heaven's dome, nor adrift on the deep a more desolate man. Yet I came unharmed from that hostile clutch, though spent with swimming. The sea upbore me, flood of the tide on Finnish land, the welling waters. No wise of thee have I heard men tell such terror of falchions, bitter battle. Breca ne'er yet not one of you pair in the play of war such daring deed has done at all with bloody brand. I boast not of it. Though thou wast the bane of thy brethren dear, thy closest kin, whence curse of hell awaits thee, well as thy wit may serve. For I say in sooth, thou son of Ecklaf, never had Grendel these grim deeds wrought, monster dire, on thy master dear, in Herat such havoc, if heart of thine were as battle-bold as thy boast is loud. But he has found no feud will happen, from sword-clash dread of your Danish clan, he vaunts him safe, from the victor skildings. He forces pledges, favours none of the land of Danes, but lustily murders, fights, and feasts, nor feud he dreads from spear-dane men. But speedily now shall I prove him the prowess and pride of the Geats, shall bid him battle. Blithe to mead go he that listeth, when light of dawn this morrow morning o'er men of earth, ether-robed sun from the south shall beam. Joyous then was the jewel-giver, hoar-haired, war-brave, help awaited the bright Dane's prince, from Beowulf hearing, folk's good shepherd such firm resolve. Then was laughter of liegemen loud resounding with winsome words. Came wealth thou forth, queen of Hrothgar, heedful of courtesy, gold-decked, greeting the guests in hall, and the high-born lady handed the cup first to the East Danes, heir and warden, bade him be blithe at the beer carouse, the land's beloved one. Lustily took he banquet and beaker, battle-famed king. Through the hall then went the Helming's lady, two younger and older everywhere carried the cup, till come the moment when the ring-graced queen, the royal-hearted, to Beowulf bore the beaker of mead. She greeted the Geat's lord. God she thanked in wisdom's words that her will was granted, that at last on a hero her hope could lean for comfort in terrors. The cup he took, hardy in war, from Wealthau's hand, and answer uttered the eager for combat. Beowulf spake, bairn of Ecthau. This was my thought, when my thanes and I bent to the ocean and entered our boat, that I would work the will of your people fully, or fighting fall in death in fiend's grip fast. I am firm to do an earl's brave deed, or end the days of this life of mine in the mead-hall here. Well these words to the woman seemed, Beowulf's battle-boast. Bright with gold the stately dame by her spouse sat down. Again, as erst began in hall warriors wassail and words of power, the proud bands revel, till presently the son of Halfdane hastened to seek rest for the night. He knew there waited fight for the fiend in that festal hall, when the sheen of the sun they saw no more, and dusk of night sank darkling nigh, and shadowy shapes came striding on, wan under welkin. The warriors rose. Man to man he made harangue, Hrothgar to Beowulf, bade him hail, let him wield the wine-hall. A word he added. Never to any man erst I trusted, since I could heave up hand and shield, this noble Dane-hall, till now to thee. Have now and hold this house unpeered. Remember thy glory. 
thy might declare watch for the foe. No wish shall fail thee if thou bidest the battle with bold one life. End of section two. Read by Kara Schallenberg. www.kray.org. On July 27, 2006. In Oceanside, California. Please visit. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Karen Savage, Waco, Texas, August 2006. Beowulf. Translated by Francis Barton Gummer. Section 3. Then Rothgar went with his hero train, defence of Sildings, forth from Hall. Fain would the war-lord wilt thou seek, couch of his queen. The king of glory against this Grendel a guard had set, so heroes heard, a hall-defender, who warded the monarch and watched for the monster. In truth the Geat's prince gladly trusted his metal, his might, the mercy of God. Cast off then his corslet of iron, helmet from head. To his henchmen gave choicest of weapons the well-chased sword, bidding him guard the gear of battle. Spake then his vaunt the valiant man, Beowulf gate, ere the bed be sought. Of force in fight no feebler I count me, in grim war-deeds, than Grendel deems him. Not with the sword, then, to sleep of death his life will I give, though it lie in my power. No skill is his to strike against me, my shield to hew, though he hardy be, bold in battle. We both this night shall spurn the sword, if he seek me here unweaponed for war. Let wisest God, sacred Lord, on which side soever doom decree as he deemeth right. Reclined then the chieftain, and cheek-pillows held the head of the earl, while all about him seamen hardy on poor beds sank. None of them thought that thence their steps to the folk and fastness that fostered them, to the land they loved, would lead them back. Full well they wist that on warriors many battle-death seized, in the banquet-hall of Danish clan. But comfort and help, war-wheel weaving, to weight of folk, the master gave, that by might of one over their enemy all prevailed by single strength. In sooth, tis told that highest god o'er humankind hath wielded ever. Through one night striding came the walker in shadow. Warriors slept, whose hest was to guard the gabled hall, all save one. T'was widely known, that against God's will the ghostly ravager him could not hurl to haunts of darkness, wakeful, ready, with warrior's wrath, bold he bided the battle's issue. Then from the moorland by misty crags with God's wrath laden Grendel came. The monster was minded of mankind now, sundry to seize in the stately house. Under welkin he walked, till the wine-palace there, gold hall of men, he gladly discerned, flashing with fretwork. Not first time this, that he the home of Hrothgar sought, yet ne'er in his life-day, late or early, such hardy heroes, such hall-thanes found. To the house the warrior walked apace, parted from peace. The portal opened it, though with forged bolts fast, when his fist had struck it, and baleful he burst in his blatant rage the house's mouth. All hastily, then, o'er fair-paved floor, the fiend trod on, ireful he strode. There streamed from his eyes fearful flashes, like flame to see. He spied in hall the hero-band, kin and clansmen clustered asleep, hardy liegemen. Then laughed his heart. For the monster was minded, ere morn should dawn, Savage to sever the soul of each, Life from body, Since lustful banquet waited his will. But weird forbade him to seize any more Of men on earth after that evening. Eagerly watched Higlac's clansman, His cursed foe, How he would fare in fell attack. Not that the monster was minded to pause. Straight away he seized a sleeping warrior For the first, and tore him fiercely asunder, The bone-frame bit, drank blood in streams, swallowed him piecemeal. Swiftly thus the lifeless corse was clear devoured, e'en feet and hands. Then farther he hide, for the hardy hero with hand he grasped, felt for the foe with fiendish claw, for the hero reclining, who clutched it boldly, prompt to answer, propped on his arm. Soon then saw that shepherd of evils that never he met in this middle world, in the ways of earth, another white with heavier hand-gripe. At heart he feared, sorrowed in soul, None the sooner escaped. Fain would he flee, his fastness seek the den of devils. No doings now such as oft he had done in days of old. 
Then bethought him the hardy Higlac thane of his boast at evening. Up he bounded, grasped firm his foe, whose fingers cracked. The fiend made off, but the earl close followed. The monster meant, if he might at all, to fling himself free and far away fly to the fens, knew his fingers' power in the gripe of the grim one. Gruesome march to Herod, this monster of harm had made. Din filled the room, the Danes were bereft, castle dwellers and clansmen all, earls of their ale. Angry were both those savage hall guards, the house resounded. Wonder it was the wine hall firm in the strain of their struggle stood, to earth the fair house fell not, too fast it was within and without, by its iron bands craftily clamped, though there crashed from sill many a mead bench. Men have told me, gay with gold, where the grim foes wrestled. So well had weaned the wisest sildings, that not ever at all might any man that bone-decked brave house break asunder, crush by craft, unless clasp of fire and smoke engulfed it. Again up rose din redoubled. Danes of the north with fear and frenzy were filled, each one, who from the war that wailing heard, God's foe sounding his grisly song, cry of the conquered, clamorous pain from captive of hell. Too closely held him he who of men in might was strongest in that same day of this our life. Not in any wise would the earl's defence suffer that slaughterous stranger to live, unless deeming his days and years to men on earth. Now many an earl of Beowulf brandished blade ancestral, fain the life of their lord to shield their praised prince, if power were theirs. Never they knew, as they neared the foe, hardy-hearted heroes of war, aiming their swords on every side the accursed to kill. No keenest blade, no fairest of falchions fashioned on earth, could harm or hurt that hideous fiend. He was safe by his spells from sword of battle, from edge of iron. Yet his end and parting on that same day of this our life woeful should be, and his wandering soul far off flit to the fiend's domain. Soon he found, who in former days, harmful in heart and hated of God, on many a man such murder wrought, that the frame of his body failed him now. For him the keen-souled kinsman of Higlac held in hand, hateful alive was to each other. The outlaw dire took mortal hurt, a mighty wound showed on his shoulder, and sinews cracked and the bone-frame burst. To Beowulf now the glory was given, and Grendel thence death-sick his den in the dark moor sought, noisome abode. He knew too well that here was the last of life, an end of his days on earth. To all the Danes by that bloody battle the boon had come. From ravage had rescued the roving stranger Hrothgar's hall. The hardy and wise one had purged it anew. His night-work pleased him, his deed and its honour. To eastern Danes had the valiant Geat his vaunt made good, all their sorrow and ills assuaged, their bale of battle borne so long, and all the dole they erst endured pain a-plenty. T'was proof of this when the hardy in fight a hand laid down, arm and shoulder, all indeed of Grendel's gripe, neath the gabled roof. Many at morning, as men have told me, warriors gathered the gift-hall round, folk-leaders faring from far and near, o'er wide-stretched ways, the wonder to view, trace of the traitor. Not troublous seemed the enemy's end to any man, who saw by the gate of the graceless foe how the weary-hearted, away from thence, baffled in battle and band, his steps death-marked dragged to the devil's mere. Bloody the billows were boiling there, turbid the tide of tumbling waves, horribly seething, with sword-blood hot, by that doomed one died, who in den of the moor laid forlorn his life adown, his heathen soul in hell received it. Home then rode the hoary clansmen from that merry journey, and many a youth on horses white, the hardy warriors back from the mere. Then Beowulf's glory eager they echoed, and all averred that from sea to sea, or south or north, there was no other in earth's domain under vault of heaven more valiant found, of warriors none more worthy to rule. On their lord beloved they laid no slight, gracious Hrothgar, a good king he. From time to time the tried in battle their grey steeds set to gallop amain, and ran a race when the road seemed fair. From time to time a thane of the king, who had made many vaunts, was mindful of verses, stored with sagas and songs of old, bound word to word in well-knit rhyme, wielded his lay. This warrior soon, of Beowulf's quest, right cleverly sang, and artfully added an excellent tale, in well-ranged words, of the warlike deeds he had heard in saga of Sigamund. Strange the story. He said it all. The Walesing's wanderings wide, his struggles which never were told to tribes of men, the feuds and the frauds, save to Fitella only. 
when of these doings he deigned to speak, uncle to nephew. As ever the twain stood side by side in stress of war, and multitude of the monster kind they had felled with their swords. Of Sigamund grew, when he passed from life, no little praise for the doughty in combat a dragon killed that herded the horde. Under hoary rock the atheling dared the deed alone, fearful quest, nor was Fatella there. Yet so it befell, his falchion pierced that wondrous worm. On the wall it struck, best blade. The dragon died in its blood. Thus had the dread one, by daring, achieved over the ring horde to rule at will, himself to pleasure. A sea boat he loaded, and bore on its bosom the beaming gold, son of Wales. The worm was consumed. He had of all heroes the highest renown among races of men, this refuge of warriors, for deeds of daring that decked his name, since the hand and heart of Heramond grew slack in battle. He swiftly banished to mingle with monsters at mercy of foes, to death was betrayed, for torrents of sorrow had lamed him too long. A load of care to earls and athelings all he proved. Oft indeed in earlier days, for the warriors' wayfaring wise men mourned, who had hoped of him help from harm and bale, and had thought their sovereign's son would thrive, follow his father, his folk protect, the horde and the stronghold, hero's land, home of Sildings. But here, Thanes said, the kinsmen of Higlac kinder seemed to all. The other was urged to crime, and afresh to the race, the fallow roads by swift steeds measured, the morning sun was climbing higher. Clansmen hastened to the high-built wall, those hearty-minded, the wonder to witness. Warden of treasure, crowned with glory, the king himself, with stately band from the bride-bower strode, and with him the queen and her crowd of maidens, measured the path to the mead-house fair. Rothgar spake. To the hall he went, stood by the steps, the steep roof saw, garnished with gold, in Grendel's hand. For the sight I see to the sovereign ruler, be speedy thanks. A throng of sorrows I have borne from Grendel, but God still works wonder on wonder, the warden of glory. It was but now that I never more for woes that weighed on me waited help long as I lived, when laved in blood stood sword gore stained this stateliest house, widespread woe for wise men all, who had no hope to hinder ever foes infernal and fiendish sprites from havoc and hall. This hero now, by the wielder's might, a work has done that not all of us erst could ever do by wile and wisdom. Lo, well can she say, whoso of women this warrior bore among sons of men, if still she liveth, that the god of the ages was good to her in the birth of her bairn. Now, Beowulf, thee of heroes best, I shall heartily love as mine own, my son. Preserve thou ever this kinship new. Thou shalt never lack wealth of the world that I wield as mine. Full oft for less have I largesse showered my precious hoard on a punier man, less stout in struggle. Thyself hast now fulfilled such deeds that thy fame shall endure through all the ages. As ever he did, well may the wielder reward thee still. Beowulf spake, Baron of Ecthau. This work of war most willingly we have fought, this fight, and fearlessly dared force of the foe. Fain too were I hadst thou but seen himself, what time the fiend in his trappings tottered to fall. Swiftly I thought, in strongest gripe on his bed of death, to bind him down, that he in the heart of this hand of mine should breathe his last. But he broke away. Him I might not, the maker willed not, hinder from flight, and firm enough hold the life-destroyer. Too sturdy was he, the ruthless in running. For rescue, however, he left behind him his hand in pledge, arm and shoulder, nor aught of help could the cursed one thus procure at all. None the longer liveth he, loathsome fiend, sunk in his sins, but sorrow holds him tightly grasped in gripe of anguish, in baleful bonds where bide he must, evil outlaw, such awful doom as the mighty maker shall meet him out. More silent seemed the son of Eglaf in boastful speech of his battle-deeds, since athelings all, through the earl's great prowess, beheld that hand on the high roof gazing, foeman's fingers, the forepart of each, of the sturdy nails to steel was likest. Heathen's hand-spear, hostile warrior's claw uncanny. T'was clear, they said, that him no blade of the brave could touch, how keen soever, or cut away that battle-hand bloody from baneful foe. End of section 3 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, to find out how you can volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. Beowulf, translated by Francis Barton Gumer. Section 4 There was Harry and Hest in Herot now. 
for hands to bedeck it, and dense was the throng of men and women the wine-hall to cleanse, the guest-room to garnish. Gold gay shone the hangings that were wove on the wall, and wonders many to delight each mortal that looks upon them. Though braced within by iron bands, that building bright was broken sorely. Rent were its hinges, the roof alone held safe and sound. When seared with crime, the fiendish foe his flight essayed of life despairing. No light thing that the flight for safety essay it who will. Force of fate, he shall find his way to the refuge ready for race of man, for soul possesses and sons of earth, and there his body on bed of death shall rest after revel. Arrived was the hour when to hall proceeded Hafdin's son. The king himself would sit to banquet. Ne'er heard I of host in haughtier throng, more graciously gathered round giver of rings. Bowed then to bench those bearers of glory, fain of the feasting. Fately received many a mead cup, the mighty in spirit kinsman who sat in the sumptuous hall, Throthgar and Hrothulf. Heroth now was filled with friends, the folk of Skildings, ne'er yet had tried the traitor's deed. To Beowulf gave the bane of Hafdeen, a gold-wove banner, guerdon of triumph, broidered battle-flag, breastplate and helmet, and a splendid sword was seen of many, borne to the brave one. Beowulf took cup in hall for such costly gifts, he suffered no shame in that soldier throng. For I heard a few heroes in heartier mood, with four such gifts, so fashioned with gold. On the ale bench honouring others thus, o'er the roof of the helmet high a ridge, wound with wires kept ward o'er the head, lest the relict of files should fierce invade sharp in the strife, when that shielded hero should go to grapple against his foes. Then the earl's defence on the floor bade lead, Courses eight with carven headgear adown the hall. One horse was decked, with a saddle all shining and set in jewels. T'was the battle-seat of the best of kings, When to play of swords the son of half Dean was fain to fare, Ne'er failed his valour in the crush of combat, When corpses fell, to Beowulf over them both then gave the refuge of Ingwine's right and power. O war-steeds and weapons, wished him joy of them. Manfully thus the mighty prince, hoard guard for heroes, that hard fight repaid, with steeds and treasures, contemned by none, who is willing to say the sooth aright. And the lord of earls to each that came, with Beowulf over the briny ways, an heirloom there at the ale bench gave, precious gift, and the price bade pay, in gold for him whom Grendel est murdered, and fain of them more had killed, had not wisest God their word averted. And the man's brave mood the Maker then ruled humankind as here and now, therefore is in sight always best, and forethought of mind, how much awaits him of leaf and of loath, who long time here through days of warfare this world endures. Then song and music mingled sounds, and the presence of Hafdeen's head of armies, and harping was heard with the hero lay, as Throfgar's singer the hall joy woke, along the mead seats making his song. Of that sudden raid on the sons of Finn, Hafdeen's hero, Naf the Skilding, was fated to fall in the Frisian slaughter. Hildberg needed not hold in value, her enemy's honour, innocent both, were the loved one she lost at the linden play, bairn and brother they bowed to fate. Stricken by spears, t'was a sorrowful woman. None doubted why the daughter of Hock bewailed her doom when dawning came, and under the sky she saw them lying, kinsmen murdered, where most she had kenned of the sweets of the world. By war were swept two Finn's own liegemen, and few were left in the parleying place. He could ply no longer weapon nor war could he wage on Hengist, and rescue his remnant by right of arms from the prince's thane, a pact he offered. 
another dwelling the Danes should have. Hall and high seat, and half the power, should fall to them in Frisian land, and at the fee gifts. Folkwald's son, day by day, the Danes should honour, the folk of Hengist favour with rings, even as truly with treasure and jewels, with fretted gold as his Frisian kin. He meant to honour in ale hall there. Pact of peace they plighted further, on both sides firmly, Finn to Hengist, with oath upon honour, openly promised, that woeful remnant with wise men's aid, nobly to govern, so none of the guests by word or work should warp the treaty, or with malice of mind bemoan themselves, as forced to follow their fee-giver's slayer, lordless men as their lot ordained. Should Frisian, moreover, with foeman's taunt, that murderous hatred to mind recall, then edge of the sword, must seal his doom. Oaths were given, and ancient gold heaped from hoard, the hardy skilding battle thane best on his balefire lay. All on the pyre were plain to see, the gory sark, the gilded swine crest, bore of hard iron and athlings many, slain by the sword at the slaughter they fell it was hildbur's hest at neff's own pyre the bairn of her body on brands to lay his bones to burn on the balefire placed at his uncle's side in sorrowful dirges bewept them the woman great wailing ascended then wound up to welkin the wildest of death fires roared o'er the hillock Heads all were melted, gashes burst, and blood gushed out from bites of the body. Balefire devoured greediest spirit, though spared not by war, out of either folk their flower was gone. Then hastened those heroes their home to see, friendless to find the Frisian land, Houses and Highburg hanged as still, Through the death-dyed winter dwelt with Finn, Holding pact yet of home he minded, Though powerless, his ring-decked prow to drive Over the waters, now waves rolled fierce, Lashed by the winds, or winter locked them In icy fetters. Then fared another year to men's dwellings, as yet they do, The sun-bright skies that their season ever duly await. Far off winter was driven, fair lay earth's breast, And fain was the rover, the guest, to depart, Though more gladly he pondered, on wreaking his vengeance Than roaming the deep, and how to hasten the hot encounter, Where sons of the Frisians were sure to be, so we escaped, not the common doom, When Hun, with laughing the light of battle, Best of blades, his bosom pierced, Its edge was feigned with the Frisian earls. On fierce heart Finn there fell likewise, On himself at home the horrid saw death, For Guthlaf and Oslaf of grim attack, Had sorrowing told from seaways landed, Mourning their woes. Finn's wavering spirit, bowed not in breast. The burg was reddened with blood of foemen, and Finn was slain. King amid clansmen, the queen was taken. To their ship the skilding warriors bore all the chattels the chieftain owned, whatever they found in Finn's domain of gems and jewels. The gentle wife, o'er paths of the deep to the Danes they bore, led to her land. The lay was finished, the gleeman song. Then glad rose the revel, bench boy brightened, bearers draw from their wonder vats wine. Comes wilt thou forth under gold crown, goes where the good pair sit, uncle and nephew, two each to the other one, kindred in amity. Unfirth the spokesman at the skilding lord's feet sat, men had faith in his spirit, his keenness of courage, though kinsmen had found him unsure at the sword-play. The skilding queen spoke. Quaff of this cup, my king and lord, breaker of rings, and blithe be thou, gold friend of men to the geats here speak, 
such words of mildness as men should use. Be glad with thy geats, of those gifts be mindful, or near or far which now thou hast. Men say to me, a son thou wishest, yon hero to hold, thy Horoth's perjured jewel hall brightest, enjoy thou canst, with many a largest, and leave to thy kin, folk and realm, when forth thou goest to greet thy doom. For gracious I deem my Hrothulf, willing to hold and rule nobly our youths, if thou yield up first, prince of Skildings, thy part in the world, I ween with good he will well requite, offspring of ours, when all he minds that for him we did in his helpless days, of gift and grace, to gain him honour. Then she turned to the seat where her sons were placed, Threthric and Hrothmund, with heroes bairns, young men together, the geat too sat there, Beowulf brave the brothers between. A cup she gave him with kindly greeting, and winsome words of wounded gold she offered to honour him arm jewels twain, corslet and rings, and of collars the noblest that ever I knew the earth around. Ne'er heard I so mighty neath heaven's dome a hoard gem of heroes, since hammer bore to his bright built burg the brising's necklace, jewel and gem casket. Jealousy fled he, or menrock's hate, chose help eternal. He Gallic Geat, grandson of Swerting, on the last of his raids this ring bore with him, under his banner the booty defending, the war spoil warding, but word o'erwhelmed him, what time in his daring dangers he sought, feud with Frisians. Fairest of gems he bore with him, of the beaker of waves, sovereign strong under shield he died. Fell the corpse of the king into keeping of Franks. Gear of the breast and that gorgeous ring, weaker warriors won the spoil. After gripe of battle from Geatland's lord, and held the death-field. Din rose in hall. Pilpol spake amid warriors, and said, This jewel enjoy in thy jocund youth. Beowulf loved these battle-weeds where a royal treasure and richly thrive. Preserve thy strength, and these striplings here, counsel in kindness requital be mine. Hast done such deeds that for days to come thou art famed among folk both far and near, so wide as washeth the wave of ocean his windy walls. Through the ways of life prosper, O prince, I pray for thee, rich possessions, to son of mine, be helpful indeed, and uphold his joys. Here every earl to the other is true, mild of mood to the master loyal. Thanes are friendly, the throng obedient, liegemen are revelling, list and obey. Went then to her place, that was proudest of feasts, flowed wine for the warriors. Word they knew not, destiny dire, and the doom to be seen, by many an earl, when eve should come, and Hrothgar homeward hasten away, royal to rest. The room was guarded by an army of earls, as erst was done. They bared the bench-balls, abroad they spread, beds and bolsters, one beer carouser in danger of doom, lay down in the hall. At their heads they set their shields of war, Bucklers bright on the bench were there, Over each athling easy to see, The high battle-helmet, the haughty spear, The corslet of rings, t'was their custom so, Ever to be for battle prepared, At home or harrying which it were, Even as oft as evil threatened their sovereign king, They were clansmen good. Then sank they to sleep with sorrow one bought, His rest of the evening, as oft time had happened when Grendel guarded that golden hall, evil wrought till his end drew nigh, slaughter for sins. Twas seen and told how an avenger survived the fiend, as was learned afar. The live-long time after that grim fight, Grendel's mother, monster of women, mourned her woe. She was doomed to dwell in the dreary waters, cold sea-courses, 
since cain cut down with edge of the sword his only brother his father's offspring outlawed he fled marked with murder from men's delights warded the wilds there woke from him such fate sent ghosts as grendel who war wolf horrid at herot found a warrior watching and waiting the fray with whom the grisly one grappled amain but the man remembered his mighty power the glorious gift that god had sent him in his maker's mercy put his trust for comfort and help so he conquered the foe felled the fiend who fled abject reft of joy to the realms of death mankind's foe and his mother now gloomy and grin would go that quest of sorrow the death of her son to avenge to herot came she where helmeted danes slept in the hall too soon came back old ills of the earls when in she burst the mother of grendel less grim though that terror e'en as terror of woman in war is less might of maid then of men in arms when hammer forged the falcon hard sword gore stained though swine of the helm crested with keen blade calves amain then was in the hall the hard edge drawn the swords on the settles and shields a many firm held in hand nor helmet minded nor harness of mail whom that horror seized haste was hers she would hie afar and save her life when the liegeman saw her yet a single aetheling up she seized fast and firm as she fled to the moor he was for hrothgar of heroes the dearest of trusty vassals betwixt the seas whom she killed on his couch a clansman famous in battle brave nor was beowulf there another house had been held apart after giving of gold for the geat renowned uproar filled her wrath's the hand all had viewed blood fleck she bore with her bale was returned dole in the dwellings twas dire exchange where dane and geat were doomed to give the lives of loved ones long tried king the hoary hero at heart was sad when he knew his noble no more lived and dead indeed was his dearest thane to his bower was beowulf brought in haste dauntless victor as daylight broke along with his earls the aetheling lord with his clansmen came where the king abode waiting to see if the wielder of all would turn this tale of trouble and woe strode over floor the famed in strife with his hand companions the hall resounded wishing to greet the wise old king ingwine's lord he asked if the night had passed in peace to the prince's mind End of section four.